such thing as bad publicity. I need 15 more minutes. See, I'm looking for 15 minutes less, so this is going to work out real great. <laughs> what do you do for a living? You don't want to know. I'm an LGB activist. LGB? Like, from Russia? No. What's the LGB? LGB. Oh, okay. Lesbian, gay, and oh. bisexual. Oh, oh my god, okay. <laughs> no, I've heard of it. I just, yeah, I've... I've thought there were more letters. So what's the difference between the LGB and the LGBTQIA plus? You tell me. Um, Are all straight people. The woman was too stunned to speak. Anything to the right of the LGB is straight people. I didn't used to have any other letters. All of a sudden they decided it, it always had letters. No, it did not. Hey, you're really against the letters. Well, no, the same sex attraction is one thing. And all those other letters are not about same-sex attraction. There are three sexual orientations. Homosexual, heterosexual, and bisexual. LGB is about sexual orientation. The other letters have something the people could in some backwards way or forwards way be LGB, but it involves some other issue and agenda. Many agree with what I talk about on this channel, about the importance of single sex spaces, of being able to freely talk about female experiences and female oppression, about the silliness of pretending that biological sex is not a real thing, or the unfairness of allowing men to identify as women and to access scholarships, jobs, and awards meant for women. And many more are unable or unwilling to say so aloud in their real lives out of fear of social retribution. These kitties are more real than you would ever be. I got body. No man wants you. No man wants After all, there have been many examples of individuals being fired for correctly referring to a person's sex. Perhaps the most infamous example of this is Maya Forstater, who as of last year was finally recognized for being unfairly fired for referring to a non-binary identified man as he. A Texas teacher is fighting back after being fired following her refusal to identify a six-year-old girl as a boy. The six-year-old is transgendered. Dale Hurd is on this story. We should be able to stand up for our rights without getting terminated for it. Lawyers for a Texas teacher have filed a federal discrimination lawsuit after she says she was fired for refusing to address a six-year-old girl as a transgender boy. Madeline Kirksey and co-worker Akisha Wyatt say a six-year-old girl came to the Children's Lighthouse Learning Center in Katy, Texas, wanting to be called a boy. The child's same-sex parents presented her as transgender. I took a stance, first off, because of my beliefs. Um, I trust God. Um, and secondly, I stood up for the protection of all the children, not just the one. I just want to stand up for the, my rights also. Mm -hmm. And what is, what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. The teachers say the child seemed confused about her gender at times claiming she was a girl and using the girl's restroom. Their attorney filed a complaint on the basis of their religious beliefs, race, age, and gender. A spokesman for the Children's Lighthouse Learning Centers told TV station KTRK via iPhone that he believes this is simply part of a bigger national agenda on transgender rights. In 2015, two Texas daycare teachers were fired for misgendering a preschool student and raising concerns about the confusion the students often changing gender identity caused for other students. Trans activists attempted to get Megan Murphy fired for an article in which she criticized Cox for attempting to achieve a perfect body as defined by a patriarchal slash porn culture through plastic surgery and then presenting it as a sexualized object for public consumption, and later mocks her and other trans women for spending thousands and thousands of dollars sculpting their bodies in order to look like some cartoonish version of woman as defined by the porn industry and pop culture. In 2015, a Michigan woman had her Planet Fitness membership revoked for complaining about a trans woman in the women's changing room. Others have faced violence for speaking candidly. Zoe Turr assaulted Ben Shapiro on air for misgendering and, despite being live on air, received no consequences for the action. Dysphoria. You, you're very familiar with that, Zoe. Very familiar. It's not about the chromosome. Excuse me, the chromosomes within we our nuclei. We both know nuclei. chromosomes yeah, don't necessarily mean you're male or female. Gender. 
with gender, gender identity. Go ahead. No, so Especially, what, but even so, you have a thing like Kleinfelter's syndrome. So you don't know what you're talking about. You're not educated on genetics. Would you like to discuss the genetics? Or well, no, well, no, what are no. Your genetics. I, I, so I'd stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. No, I know. Well, yeah. Lauren Jessica, 42, from McKellina in Powys, pleaded guilty to trying to kill Ralph Nibbs, who was head of human resources and welfare at the sport's British governing body as well as a former professional rugby player. In what was described as a cold, calculated attack, the transgender athlete stabbed Nibbs multiple times in the head and neck over a dispute over whether or not he should be able to compete in women's races. Over the past few years, these consequences have been enshrined in law, to the point that one could be fined or even jailed for a tweet that calls Eli Ehrlich, Jessica Yaniv, or Chris Chan male. New York City has criminalized misgendering a trans person by labeling accurately referring to a person's sex a discriminatory act, which can elicit fines of up to $250,000. According to the new guidelines, the commission can impose civil penalties of up to $125,000 for violations of the law and in extreme circumstances of up to $250,000 for violations that are a result of quote-unquote willful, wanton, or malicious conduct. Most recently, the attorney who assisted in the prosecution of a transgender child molester has reportedly been suspended from his role by the district attorney's office after being accused of misgendering and deadnaming the perpetrator. Other forms of silencing are more malicious and easier to not notice unless one is actively looking for it. Homosexuality doesn't really exist because it can only exist in a binary. This includes the silencing of women within organizations who have feminist views, who criticize the broadening of the usage of women or are lesbians. Derek Jensen was disinvited from Oregon State University over transphobia and wrote a response in which he stated, A few months ago, I was deplatformed from speaking at Oregon State University. The professors who deplatformed me said that it was because my speaking at the university could hurt the feelings of the students who identify as transgender. This is because I do not believe that women, including those who have been sexually assaulted by men, should be forced to share their most vulnerable spaces with men. I do not believe that women should be forced to bathe, sleep, gather, or organize with men unless they choose to do so. For this, I was deplatformed. Julie Bendel, who has done a myriad of work regarding feminism, has been deplatformed multiple times for her views. In a speech regarding these experiences, she noted, Then when I would go to universities, invited by staff rather than the NUS, because of course, the NUS no platform me, and make sure that every other student bodies lose their funding from them if they invite me. I would go onto campus. For example, last time I was at Essex University, I was invited to debate a pornographer and the usual petition. I must say that change.org has really benefited from this row, this online petition thing. I mean, they are so busy with it all. Went around. Ban Julie Bendel from campus. Her presence on campus for Muslim students, queer students, bi students, polyamorous students, sex working students, and trans students will be an act of violence. This is all online for you all to see. I don't even need to exaggerate, which is breaking my heart because this is what I love doing more than anything. There are a myriad of other examples, too many to list. From campus vagina monologues being canceled for being about vaginas and therefore exclusive to trans women, to debates about transgender slash gay rights excluding women and lesbians, to the dissolution of Mitch Fest and other female-only festivals. Those who accurately report on trans issues, namely by noting that biological sex is real and immutable, have been punished and silenced for doing so. And yet, you'll note that there have been no similar punishments for the hateful and violent speech used against those who disagree with gender ideology. This, of course, is not always directed at women or lesbians, but rather anyone with concerns about the conflation of gender with stereotypes, which in turn can include conservatives, liberals, and regular men and women. Truly, it impacts anyone who is still willing to stand by logic and fact that there are only two sexes, two zygotes, ova and sperm, and only two genders, which in turn reflect the roles and expectations placed upon them. It seems as if the concept of free speech itself is under fire, and more so, science itself. The use of social media and groupthink to spread misinformation and to discourage individual or critical thought is why people like JKR are so easily vilified. Few can actually name what she supposedly said that was transphobic, and when one actually reads the tweets, they are surprisingly tame. Similar to the future that 1984 predicted and hoped to warn against, we are living in a society in which one must agree that 2 plus 2 equals 5 or else face punishment from within our social circles, from our jobs and colleges, and even from the law. If it were true that trans-identified individuals were a minority in need of protection, who face undue punishment and hatred and are in need of help, then why are they the ones who determine how women talk about their oppression and experiences? Here's my controversial take of the day that nobody asked for, but I just feel so strongly about this. 
This is absolutely no hate to the person that I'm stitching right now because I totally agree with everything that she said, okay? And y'all can go watch her video if y'all would like to because she made a lot of good points. I came up here to give the more ratchet version of what she said, okay? I always find it interesting that I never see women who transition into men do this to naturally born men. I never see them tell men like, oh, you can't call cologne men's body spray. You can't call boxers men's underwear. It's not Father's Day. You got to call it Parents Day. I never see women who transition into men do that. It's always the men who transition into women who then feel the need to stop all over naturally born women in order for their existence to be validated so i might be canceled for saying this but it don't seem like it's a trans problem it seems like it's a man problem but y'all don't fight me because i know how you like to tussle and i ain't had to fight a grown man since i was 15 thank you why has the rest of the world bowed down to their preferred word usage changing the way we speak to better help support their belief that sex can be changed and that gender is a matter of choice because when did it become offensive to call yourself a freaking woman? Like, when did I... What memo did I miss? Why do I have to call myself a person with a uterus to not offend anyone? If you're a trans woman, you don't want to be called a he anymore. Okay, I'm good. I'm with y'all. But why do I have to call myself a cis woman or an AFAB to make anybody feel better? What? This is not free speech. This is coerced speech. We are being forced to adjust our language according to the whims of a so-called minority with the threat of social ostracization, economic loss, and physical harm as punishment. We are being forced to lie, as this language obfuscates the nature of reality. Midwives are forced to use inclusive language to avoid hurting the feelings of men who will never experience childbirth, and for the small minority of transidentified females who carry a child to term. Women are forced to refer to themselves as cis, despite trans women by nature being a derivative of women-born women. To the ladies that do not like to be referred to as a cisgender woman. All right, don't come in my comments with no bullshit because I do like to tussle. Here's the example I got for you. You got coffee and you got decaffeinated. When you go to Starbucks, who says, can I have a caffeinated coffee? No one. Why? Because coffee, without any other adjective added to it, because none is needed, is in its natural form and its natural form is caffeinated decaffeinated needs the differentiation because it is not in its original form. In the name of politeness, we are told that men can be lesbians and must be welcomed into our spaces or else we are bigots. I know another trans girl made a post about this, but it's been bothering me, so I want to make a post about it. I am a trans lesbian. And every time I hear a lesbian talk about their dislike of mascara wands, it hurts me. It hurts trans women. It makes us feel unwanted. It makes us feel not wanted in the community, period. Because there is an equation almost every time in one of these posts of mascara wands to lesbianism. I'm not saying you can't have a preference. I'm saying don't talk about it publicly. I'm saying don't post about it on Maine to get 100k likes. When you post about it publicly, it hurts us. It makes us feel unwanted. It makes us feel unsafe. It makes us feel discarded. We are a group constantly defined by our genitals. And when you hate on us, hate on those body parts, it feels disgusting. Just make this place safer for us. That's it. Make it comfortable. We are told to call a rapist she, to pretend that the sudden rise of female offending sex crimes are not committed by males retaining a male pattern of criminology. We are told that to accurately report the world around us as it is, is to be hateful, and therefore to agree or to be silenced. The fear of social retribution for expressing opinions on the importance of single-sex spaces, the reality of biological sex, and the unfairness of allowing men to identify as women is a real issue not only for feminists, but for the average individual aware of biological and social reality. This fear is not without justification, as individuals who have spoken out have faced significant consequences such as getting fired, deplatformed, or even physically attacked. The fact that these consequences have been enshrined in law is alarming, and the silencing of dissenting voices on these issues undermines the principle of free speech. It is important to create a culture where individuals can express their opinions on these issues without fear of retribution, and where diverse perspectives can be heard and respected. And in order to do so, we have to speak out despite the consequences. Many people silently agree but refuse to voice their opinion out of fear that they will stand alone. This is known as pluralistic ignorance, which essentially is the phenomenon of everyone thinks, but everyone thinks that everyone believes. In other words, pluralistic ignorance is a phenomenon that occurs when individuals in a group have false beliefs about the attitudes and beliefs of others in the same group, which leads to a situation where everyone in the group privately holds a different view from the group norm but still publicly conforms to it.
This can occur because individuals fear social retribution, disapproval, or or ostracization from the group if they express a different view from the majority, even if they personally disagree. The only way to allow multiple opinions to be expressed is to express them and to break up the majority, creating an example for others to follow. So yes, I know that it might get you in trouble, that people might not talk to you, that you might lose friends, but I assure you, every voice that we add to this debate is proof that this is not a minority belief, that the world is not insane, that everyone is pretending that you can change your sex, that the man in the woman's dressing room is a woman. All of it is fake. All of it is pretending. And the more that we stand up and admit that, the more that we're able to actually reverse these changes. This, dear viewers, is where we part. Please let me know what you think about this topic, because pluralistic ignorance is an interesting topic to me specifically because of how it works in colleges. I mean, if you actually try to discuss feminism in college, you will get shut down immediately for claims of transphobia or misandry or whatever else they want to throw at you. But if you don't use the terms, if you use different language, if you dumb it down, people will immediately agree. And I think that goes to show that we all have a lot in common, but everyone's afraid of speaking their mind because is it worth being truthful when the consequences can be so dire? If you guys have any anything else to say about free speech, I know this is a vaguely American concept, but it's something that's come really under fire in the West in general, especially with how people are being impacted by just tweeting things that are disagreed with, but you're allowed to tweet other horrible things, such as violence against women, and that's completely fine under free speech. But the minute that you say a man cannot become a woman, you are a hateful bigot and deserve to be lynched. But um, yeah, <laughs> this topic is one that I find very interesting. So if you have anything else to add, let me know, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.